Hey guys, and welcome to episode eight of the Front Boards and Four Baggers podcast. I am Eddie from Cornhole Bag Reviews, and we got Corbin from Corbin's Cornhole Reviews. Today, we're going with some OG carpet. We got the the original players. We got the Pro Advantage from Reynolds, and we got the Vikings from BG. Um, I would say these are probably two of the more either original or the most popular over the course of time. Obviously, there's tons of more carpet that's starting to come out now, but they were, these were kind of the first like mainstays in the competitive scene, I would say. Um, very similar bags in terms of play style and speeds and kind of materials too, and the way they feel slightly different on, on both, but uh, both kind of same play style, same um, route to go on these. So we'll start with the pro advantage here. So I got an old set from like 2019, unstamped. Pretty oh, broken yeah. in, but I like I like the old set because it's their old fill too, slightly different than the new fill. But um, I w- so the stats on these, so they're a four seven speed. Uh, it's just the carpet on the slow side. It's the full carpet, same with BGs, and not that's not the hybrid. And then uh, they call it their advantage material on the fast side. I'm almost positive it's that seven soft material that we like. Um, it it doesn't it feel quite as soft, yeah. But it, yeah. it and it might be the. Uh, the reverse of the Costello, that that really popular sure. old material that they used to use on mm-hmm. a lot of just suede bags and stuff, which it easily could be. But that four seven material, uh, the bead is a small asymmetrical bead, a little bit bigger than the BG fill, which means this is a little bit less puffy than a BG, but uh, still a smaller bead. Uh, price point, you know, Reynolds shines in price point. We're looking at you know fifty four bucks plus shipping, which I think is like twelve bucks, so under seventy bucks brand new uh and then you can get your name on it for like five bucks you can get customs for like 10 bucks or something i mean just very affordable and then uh on facebook i mean you can find new sets i got these for 35 you can get all the way up to like 50 60 but they they i mean they're not that expensive because they're not that expensive to get in the first place so definitely get your hands on these a lot of people have them they're pretty readily available i think with all the new bags coming out right now a lot of people are kind of getting rid of their old stuff and this is one of the bags that people i think are getting rid of but there's still people i mean it's still a very good bag it still plays really 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 well if you're if you're a person that has been throwing pro advantages for years uh you you'll you could still throw them and you know they're like your go-to bag i know windsor he has like his own windsor bags now the platinum and the silver but he uses the same carpet and i think he's just adjusted the fast side or maybe a little bit but i mean he still throws them this type of material and he's one of the best in the world uh i mean it's still a good bag it's the classic uh what's what what is your opinion on a pro ab i know you haven't thrown one in a while but or uh, yeah so it's i haven't thrown them in a little bit um I am, by the time this video posts, I'll probably have a set secured. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I need to get them again uh, yeah. just because, you know, I've been in such a carpet kick lately, but they're good bags. I, I had them and I had them back in the day, like when I started throwing, which I guess was like a year, year and a half ago. But I had like, <laughs> back I literally in the day. had, I know, back <laughs> of the day, uphill both ways in the snow. Yeah. Like it was, I had a one of four set that i had no idea it was like blackjack's first run with uh reynolds oh, i had cool. no clue they were that rare and like sold her to someone for like 50 bucks yeah <laughs> sure it's like whatever you know and it's i've seen you win some you lose some yeah it is what it is it's it's whatever um but i am going to be getting some back they're a good bag i agree with what you said on that fast side though and that's kind of what strays me away from reynolds a little bit is just the materials aren't that soft and i mean that might lend to their playability a little bit and why they do what they do but they just don't feel amazing in the hand. And a lot of people are going for that hand feel. Um, but they're a good bag. Yeah. So, I mean, I, mean and that's I, when, I will be getting on and I will be flopping on. And I, you know, I, they flop. I easily do like too. them. And I know they do. Yeah. I mean, like I was throwing them today for a little while and granted, like me and you both aren't like world's greatest floppers by any means. No, um, no. But I mean, like there are, both of these bags are like very, very easy to flop and um, very good beginner flopping bags. If you're learning how to flop, I was talking to you before this, like, I think it feels kind of like when I say papery, it's just not as soft. It's very like, it's a weird feeling, like Mm -hmm. crunchy, almost feeling material, which is why I I was talking to Corbin before this. These are pretty broken in, but I think I'm still going to throw them in wrinkle guard just to see if I can soften them up a tad, because that's my problem when I was throwing my friend's pro advantages too. Cause I, we were at a blind draw and I was like, oh, you have pro advantages. Let me try them quick before I buy some to review just to make sure, like, see if I like them. I was getting in that carpet kick. I heard, you know, they're the originals. And I was like, man, these just feel kind of crunchy like it, it, you know because i was used to my vikings that like i mean granted my vikings are like beat all hell but they're sure. still soft they're like really soft yes. um so i'm hoping maybe a little rico guard loosens it up but i mean like i they've been making this bag for so long the, so mater- long. the materials were prior to a lot of the materials we're seeing now 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, nowadays everyone's seeing, you know, the game changer material, the Viper material, that all that fast stuff. And, and even carpet bags now are being paired with that. That wasn't around like when they were making these bags, you know, they, they had suede, they had turbo, which is the, which is the material I was talking about here, but that's like one of the most common materials that's been around for years. Yeah. And that's basically all they had. And then they had carpet. So, I mean, that's, if you go back to like really old companies bags, uh, that's, that's what they use because nobody realized we should try all these other materials. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping to loosen them up a little bit, but I was throwing them today. I mean, they throw good. They, uh, I could cut them super well. I could roll them super well. Uh, but yet they were still decently hole friendly. I mean, I know people say they, they do hold up a tad. I mean, it just like any carpet, it's, it's not going to melt man. in there. Yeah. Going to. But I really didn't find them unpleasant to play with. Um, yeah. I'd say the negative for me is the same negative I had for the Vikings, which is uh, the fast side. I just have to give a little bit more to, to yes. really push. And sometimes with that, with the bouncier bags, you give it a good little, little, extra and then it'll flop on you and then you're like ah so so that's the reason we were talking that i kind of want my carpet bag paired with that you know game changer viper material material. just so i just so i can like throw it my normal nice and easy and it'll slide right up there rather than all right i gotta give this some oomph and hope i hope it goes where i want it to go Um, exactly but it's classic bag classic bag for sure Mm -hmm. um vikings and i got i don't even know what version these are they're pro stems from last combs. year. Okay, last year's yeah. They're honeycombs. Yep. Okay, whatever. It looks I, cool. I got a couple also. Oh, they, oh, those are pre-stamp Vikings. I didn't know those were pre-stamp. Bro, these are OG. Yeah, I didn't know it was the old, old, old. These are straight OGs. Yeah. I'm guessing those are so more good. broken in than your five stars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine yeah, are, I mean, but they play great. They're yeah. not like overly loose. My, look like at mine though. Mine are like. I know yours are <laughs> stupid, but this. I. <laughs> these feel but these look like they're a little thinner than those actually yeah these are big puffers um yeah which i, I actually prefer yeah I like that more than this but. i would say like again my only negative with this bag i love throwing it is just like i just feel like i don't especially if it gets a little sticky i'm like great so i have like nope i can't push for anything this is a yeah. block and roll bag only uh, yep. uh but that's what they do Vikings though for me I, I'll go first on what I oh well I guess yeah. I'll do the stats same uh, four seven speeds the carpet feels very similar to the full full carpets if you tried um, you know full carpets from companies not the hybrids it's a yeah. real carpet the fast yes. side I do think the fast side is that um, that seven material we like though it is um, it is the fill 100%. yeah the fill is a smaller bead than the Reynolds like it's probably one of the smallest mm-hmm. beads which is why BG's has such puffy bags it leads to that puffier fill um so yep. if you're a fill nut even though I'm a fill nut I can look past it because I know what it's for and I know why it's small you know well, like and the materials are both so thick that you don't feel it as much no it makes a good handle still you know yeah, I mean, exactly like I would say like in the grand scheme of all fills this is probably my least favorite fill that exists uh, no, no, sand. I don't. I don't like sand. I don't like sand. Uh, but Ooh. well, it's my least favorite feeling fill in the hand, other than sand. That's fair. But yeah. because I know the reason why it's puffy, it's supposed to play. You know, I I don't really notice it when I'm playing because I'm trying. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to focus on the other things. Uh, price point. Uh, they have them on the website right now. They do pretty regular releases for 90 bucks plus shipping. So around a hundred bucks, 105, something like that. And then on yep. Facebook, I got this set that was beat all hell for like 65 bucks, but you can get, it's like 110 and under probably maybe 120 for nice. Typically it depends on yeah. design or yeah, if they're, you know, the anniversaries go a little higher. Yeah. But, but I would say brand new, you're probably looking at like a hundred to 110. You can get some used yeah. ones. I personally, when I buy carpet, like buying, when people say like, I've beat these to hell, I'm like, yep, sign me up. <laughs> That's way send less work them. for me. Send <laughs> like, them. like send them over. Like, uh, for any of you guys that don't throw carpet, Carpet is like you could run it over with like a car and be like, all right, so now we just start times. the break in. Yeah. Like, I mean, like for some carpet times, bags today, matter. I was literally throwing them on pavement just to like start to loosen it up a little bit. Use wrinkle guard, wash out the wrinkle guard, tumble for five plus hours. It's like, all right, now it's throwable, but it's not even close but to it's broken not in. Play right, <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. And, uh, and for anyone who's learning a cut shot, learning a roll and has new bags, I said this in a video I made today too. You have to break these in, like break them like to the point of no return to get it to play like that, to get it to start cutting and rolling the way you want it to and gripping the way you want it to. And they'll play fast. If you've never thrown carpet, they'll play mm-hmm. at like a five, six, seven speed when you break it out of the package and just use wrinkle guard on it. And then oh, yeah. as you really, cause if you, I don't know if you can see in the camera, 
as you work it in, these fibers start pulling and like like you loosening wanna, up these fibers. And yeah, ugly. and it yep. slows it down to like a three four then, it gives you that more friction. But that's what grabs the yep. board and that's what flips them over. I really like vi- throwing Vikings. I just want the push side to be faster. But everything else about the Vikings, sure. I really like. Like, I mean, it's my first like real carpet bag, like big puffy bag. Yeah. And yeah. and now I, I've fallen in love with throwing roll bags, dude. It's the most satisfying shot that exists, in my opinion. I know. I'm like, and when you do it to your opponent, I don't care who you are. It's so demoralizing when someone rolls over the top. Like it just oh, feels so bad. Pe- like it's worse than airmails. I like, think it's worse than airmails. Oh, it's honestly. just like it's just like really. <laughs> You shoot really, the man? And they're like, oh, there's a chance they're missing. They see it flying through the air and they're like, oh, that could be off the back. Yeah. You shoot a roll at them, they're like, oh, nice block. And then it goes boom, 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 yeah. it. And they're like, oh. <laughs> or like if people haven't thrown a roll shot before, if you miss a roll shot, you're probably still on the board or you're it's now on a blocker or hanging. Yeah. Or it's on top of my bag. And now I'm like, well, this mm-hmm. double sucks because I can't yep. push my bag you're and I can't mm-hmm. like go over and like there's this big sandwich in front of me. Like, what do I do yeah. now? Yeah, it's yep. which is why I think I think carpets I think carpets the future, man. I know not for pro maybe because it's just so easy to just throw they could just throw it in every single time, but future for yeah. me, man, I just love I love dirtying I love up the board and throwing some out. So well you just got your Vikings back again recently after you started really started rolling again. So what what have your opinions been now that you got that flop in your arsenal? Oh man, I, I sorry. No, you can uh no, I really like them. Um, this set, you know, it's my five stars. These are pretty broken in. I'll probably throw these more than the OGs. <clears throat> Hang on, babe. I'll probably throw more than the OGs because the OGs are just a little, they're a little floppy. They're a little loose, but that's, I mean, it's an OG. That's why, I mean, they're, they're super there. Um, but they're almost a little too far past where I like a carpet to be, you know, carpet's got that sweet spot, right? <laughs> But, you that, hate but those these, are a little, though. but those are a little puffy. Okay, all right, fair enough. So the little puffier might actually help. You know, these I think it's just a little more effort to do like a flop and a roll with these. Oh, really? You really have to hit it just right. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Mine's like a bouncy these, ball. These are even. These are puffier than the OGs are, and so they just look good. They feel good. Um, it is a cool design. I love it, dude. I mean, it's yeah, it is nice. I mean, five stars local to me too. So that's pretty oh, tight. Cool. Um, but. I, I like Vikings quite a bit. It's actually a toss up like Vikings or Tangos. Which do I prefer for my really? carpet bag? Yeah, honestly, because I, I was throwing Tangos at the regional the other day and I threw them for the first two games. And in the second game, they just weren't really acting right. And it's partially these boards. You know, we talked about it a little bit. These boards are stupid bouncy. Tangos are already ridiculously bouncy. You know, my pro solution boards, they're already stupid bouncy. So it's just. I don't know. The Vikings just, they kind of play better sometimes. I just like mm-hmm. the speeds. Like you're saying that push side, you don't like that. You have to give it a little extra. That keeps me safer. Okay. So I would say when the boards are super fast missed, though, it's, it's gone. when the boards are super fast, I, I, they play totally fine. I mean, like I like playable. the push side. Yeah. The tango thing. Like I just want to set with the faster push side because up where I am, it's just humid all the time. Like it's almost Absolutely. never dry. So like I need that push side. And the benefit there is if you're doing a flop, you know, a lot of times when you're doing a flop, it lands on the fast side. Mm-hmm. If you're near the hole, that tango side is going to fall in a lot easier sure. than the Viking side will. But this is still very, very friendly. You oh, know mine's how I feel about nuts, this, whole friendly. This material. Yeah. I love this material. This is like, it's a pillow, right? <laughs> like, it's my, it's literally my favorite material on a bag, just period, hands down. So I love them. I think they're just, they're amazing bags and really for the price. And they do drops, what, Sunday through Thursday? Yeah, all the time. Sunday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I mean, and I hear like, they ship them out really fast. Like, I mean, I just saw someone, yeah, they just dropped the Halloween so. bags and like I saw yeah. people posting their mail days today. And I was like, didn't yeah, they just absolutely. drop those like two days ago? Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it's the cool part, you know, we're not doing a comparison necessarily between Pro Advantage and uh, Viking, but both companies have amazing customer service. Mm-hmm. They send you extra price, bags I mean, if they get like holes or defects and stuff. Like BG's yeah, really good that's, about extra that stuff. That actually though. happened with these. Honestly, I have another set of these sitting there because they sent me another set because I had a huge chunk of resin in them. And I contacted them and said, hey, I got them secondhand. I understand if you can't do anything, but whatever. And he's like, oh, no, that's totally on us. We'll send you some. Boom. I had them. That's so cool. They do a really good job. I mean, customer service is great. Price, I don't think 100 bucks is bad. Not for carpet. 
I mean, 60 is better, but <laughs> yeah, but I, mean, also I got these for 60. Me, so. so I got mine for sure. 60. See, so. There you, go. <laughs> so you can still get it for 60, but it's, I mean, you, you can't lose with either one of these. They're both great bags, especially if you're looking for the, the manipulator shots, you know, the cuts roll flops. And like, if you guys are just like on the Facebook pages, like, you know, obviously you see stuff buying and selling all the time. Like, don't be afraid of buying a used set of carpet bags, because in my opinion, oh, I, I, used perf- I like it more. Yeah. Like, like if you're mm-hmm. like, if you were to tell me like, oh, I really want to learn how to throw a cut shot. I just brought new Vikings. And I'm like, talk back to me in like a month when they're finally yeah, broken in, in. Yeah. and then we can talk about roll shots. Cause like, Absolutely. cause right now you, you're either going to throw these for about 25 hours or like, you know, you're going to either put, but like, if you put product in it, you can't, the problem with carpet twos, you can't really it's artificially break it in. You can, you, you can try, but like, it doesn't <laughs> slowly get to the point it needs to get. You either like completely ruin the seams and start stretching the material using too much softener or yeah. like, you know, or you permanently speed it up if you use conditioner and stuff. You can you can soften it and loosen it, and that's my goal when I do it. Yep. I make it so it's throwable in my hand, but you have to finish it. Break you like you have to finish it by throwing. Mm-hmm. There's really no other way. And it's I've told people a hundred times. They're like, "Wow, that plays really nice." Why? And I hold it up like you did, and I'm like, "See how fuzzy it is." Mm-hmm. I'm like your carpet is not fuzzy at all. And like I, I was telling you this the other day, I've literally stood there and I throw a bag a couple feet in the air and spin it real hard on the slow side and let it fall and hit my concrete. I did that all day today. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like it all just, day. And it just it did buzz make it fuzzy. The fibers yeah. a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, after a couple minutes of that, you know, maybe 10 spins per bag or whatever, you throw them and you're like, oh, those did slow down. How about that? Mm-hmm. You know? So and hey, makes caveat, anybody here who throws their bag on concrete and gets a pull, do not come not talk to fault. us. That, that This is a risk that you're willing to take, okay? <laughs> you I throw, didn't say slow side. I yeah. didn't say fast side. Well, uh, but I've had carpet like pull a strand out. Like if you- Oh, I haven't. Uh, okay. like, not not doing it, but like I've seen carpet <laughs> pull that way out of the that's carpet. Fair. Okay. So like, if you guys are yeah, like, I want to break in my carpet and throw it in my driveway. Corbin said that's <laughs> perfect. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> your onerous could pull that's your, your carpet. <laughs> I'm not buying any new bags. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, we we have funny. the luxury of having to break in carpet. So anything I can do to slightly loosen up those fibers better believe the carpet is right. just eating my bags, man. I'm, I'm throwing them full speed. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I um pleasantly surprised in my mine, maybe because I got puffier ones. Mine are bouncy balls. I mean, like I can throw yeah, like are. I can throw like a not even perfectly backloaded and it's just like boop. <laughs> like, okay. like, all right, cool. Rolling in. Yeah, I was telling you, like, with cut shots, this thing will cut like 50 degree angles. I mean, it's just, yep. it's crazy what they could do. Granted, they're insanely broken in, but Carpet, super baby. fun. Super fun. Um, today we're going to go through, so we've gone through a lot of stuff on this podcast in terms of fills, materials, and like shot types and stances and grips. Rips, today we're going to yeah. go through like practice routine. And uh, next week we're going to go through like actual strategy. So we're kind of getting more into the, all right, we kind of got like a baseline of stuff. Now what's some things that you should work on? And you should be seeing progress and like, what's your goals for these things? Like to, to kind of get to a point that you feel like you're being consistent. And then next week we'll actually talk about like, Hey, when you're playing a game, what are the shots you should be looking for? What's the strategy you should be looking for? Like, what am I, what are me and Corbin thinking when we're playing games to like, to, to make it more than just, cause when we play, I mean, and you'll realize when you play good players, it's not, I mean, yes, you want to make it in the hole every time, but 90% of the time, the game is not just, we both slide it in. It's you're manipulating bags, you're blocking behind, you're throwing these shots. So the practice is big because a lot of people, and I would say 90% of people, when they practice, they go outside and they try to just slide them all up the board. And then they wonder why they're not getting the results or they're not maybe um, getting an understanding of different types of shots and whatnot. It's because you need to practice with a purpose. And Corbin's taking the kid over to... Uh, <laughs> But you need to practice with a purpose. And that's why a lot of the time me and Corbin will set up bags in a certain way or throw certain shots in a certain way to practice doing things repetitively to get better at them. So we're going to go through a couple of those things today. The first is just obviously what most people do to warm up almost. This is the way everybody practices almost. It's just slide shots. So you're practicing, in. trying to throw all four in the hole, throwing your normal shots. Make sure you practice from both sides of the board. Get practice at those different angles. Practice, you know, the spot you're landing on the board because you want to be consistent. You don't want to be landing right next to the hole and your misses are off the back. Try to practice. And the way I look at slide practice is not only do they go in the hole, but if they don't go in the hole, I want to be either slightly short or right parallel with the hole. Like I want sure. my slide distance to be that far, right? So, right? so I don't want to be like leaving it five feet short and I don't want to be lightninging everything out the back. So you can make mm-hmm. everything in the hole, but if your one miss is 20 feet long, that's bad, you know? So you should practice yes. that distance you're practicing. So 
I would just call this a warm up. You know, I wouldn't really call that practice. I would just kind of say that's that's a generic no, but it can be. Start. Yeah, and it's. I think it's smart to actually practice slides on both sides. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because I'm a slow side thrower. Almost ninety percent of the time, I'm throwing slow side, but you still need to practice that fast side just in case you have a situation where you know you might be doing a little step out because you got a blocker in front or like the board situation calls for a little step but you're going to go fast side so that you can kind of wrap around and drop it in mm. right and we'll so get that requires that those, a lot more touch yeah the get arounds and stuff and, yeah of course yeah. of course but it, i think it's still important to practice a slide just a basic slide even open board i don't care mm. slow side and fast side regardless and i would say so i mean i have a couple buddies um that are very good players that just never throw fast side. Like they just don't enjoy the way it feels. Or they don't enjoy like okay. the different type of throws. And we tell them all the time. And, or, and I would tell all of you, if you, if you're not used to throwing hard pushes or fast side, the key with practicing fast side is realizing that you don't have to throw it extra hard. The, the fast side does that work for you. So it's kind of getting used to being like, oh, I could throw this nice, easy throw that I always throw. And the bag is still lightening up the board, right? So when you get in that push shot scenario, you can be nice and easy with the bag. You don't have to be like, oh, man, I'm giving this extra. Because if you give extra to a fast side, a lot of times you'll roll over your bags or you even push everything over the hole. Um, so getting used to throwing a fast side on a consistent basis and um, learning how to stay nice and easy and in your rhythm while switching sides, I think is really important. Um, the second sh- type of shot or practice we'll get into is block shots. In my personal opinion, this is one of the hardest shots in cornhole. Um, the reason that I say a block shot is one of the hardest shots in cornhole is because if you miss left or right or short on a block shot, a lot of the times that bag is completely dead. Um, so, but on that note, if you can get good at block shots, I think it's the, the most powerful bag that exists in cornhole. It's so um, important. Th- there's... There's no other shot that you can do that just puts the pressure on your opponent, especially mentally and consistently. And even if they're a great player or they have a lane, just a little bit in the way makes it so the shot is a little more difficult, you know? And if they push your bag and they go off to the side, a lot of the time you're closer to the hole or they are slightly off or maybe they have a dead bag. And now that's, you know, we call that a two point advantage when they have a dead bag. Mm -hmm. So the block shot is super, super important. But it's very difficult, and I don't think enough people practice them, and they just yes. expect to be able to, oh, I'm just going to throw it a little softer. Yeah, but if you throw it a little softer, your timing's off, and you throw a little more left, yes. you throw a little more right, you short arm it. It's it's a very thing you need to practice. So what I like to try to do, and I don't know how you practice this, but I like to throw it and try to land it like three to four inches before the hole in a certain square, right? So it, And preferably, my square is from the edge of the hole on my side to about yep. six inches left of the hole on their side with sure. the six inches on my side being a bad block because you're blocking yourself like a dead. Yeah, it's dead. Thing. yeah. So my goal is to hit kind of right on their middle half of the hole, but four inches short. And so anything in that square, Absolutely. I consider a good block and uh, getting used to just stopping a bag right there every single time. Even mm-hmm. if you're not going to go for these roll shots or all these other shots, it's just, you can slide the rest of your three in and now they have to deal with something. They either got to air mail, they yep. got to go around, they got to push through. It's you're making their game harder is the point of the block shot. It's um, so important. And it's, I tell like, I, I play competitive, you play competitive, right? So I always tell people in competitive, especially because if you get to advance, it's not as effective, right? Well, they're just so good. I mean, because yeah. those guys are so good, you know, they'll get, I know, they'll get around, they'll shoot over, they'll do whatever. But in competitive, a block is a crucial shot to be right. able to do. I mean, it's just, you throw a block and they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I actually played a dude Sunday. His first three rounds were 10, 12, 12, because he had first throw. As soon as I got first throw and put a block on him, he went off to the left. I'm like, hmm, interesting. Like, he couldn't deal with a block because he was a slide side thrower and just like mm-hmm. to slide them all in. So blocks are just, they're huge. You have to practice that. I mean, if you can't figure it out, keep doing it, work harder, keep throwing. I mean, it's so, so important. Like we, we joke about all the time about like the, uh, the old person that walks up with the game changer. It's like you he throw was, a block against a game changer. Yeah, yeah. But, you, but you throw a block against one of those people. They're the, that's their whole game is slide in the hole. Right. So, and I would say Minnesota where I'm at, we have a lot less competitive uh, players than you do out in Michigan in terms of like pros and advanced level players. Um, so almost everybody here is a slide in the hole kind of person. So if you can get used to throwing a good blocker, that's kind of why I've been getting into more carpet and learning these roles is because especially in my area without that level of advanced players, 
um, getting that block roll game, it just it nets you so many points because they, they just can't deal with it. Um, so many. It's that, ridiculous. It's so underrated. Yeah, very much so. Such a simple shot and so underrated. And so difficult. Everyone thinks it's so easy. Yeah, it's simple, but it's very hard. Actually. Yeah, like a lot of people, you might throw it at the hole and you leave it a little short and you're like, oh, that was a good blocker. When you try to do it on purpose, it's very mm-hmm. hard to do it consistently mm-hmm. on purpose. And like I said, it's the most punishing miss because if you miss you just have a dead bag and a lot of time you might give them a bumper you might block yourself yeah you might you know i mean so like it's it's really high risk high reward everyone loves to see the air mails the rolls these flashy shots but i think that's almost the most high risk high reward because the bumper bag i think is like the the most powerful tool that you can give uh-huh. your opponent in cornell you make the hole double the size so yeah. having that good Daddy, block is very the, very important Daddy, the hardest mind. shot for me is actually when you know, say your opponent's got two in front of the hole. You know, I got one off to the left. Hang on, babe. You can drink it. I got one on the left. He's next to me, right? He's throwing from the right. I'm on the left. And my partner's like, put it right here. You know, put it right behind their bag so that they can't push, mm-hmm. right? And I'm like, all right, got this. You miss a little Throw left. my block. I leave it a little bit to the right. Give them a perfect runway. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. that's the hardest shot for me is to like lay up a block behind. Oh, hundred percent. I, I don't know why I can't do that shot. I, I sometimes just, I do it. No problem. Yeah, I know. I'm like, well, so I just easy. give you a runway. It's cool. <laughs> or you're like, you're like, they have two bags in the middle. I've missed one left over corrected, went right. It's like, okay, uh-huh. just go behind. And then I like miss again. Just I'm like, God, yeah. how does this so hard? <laughs> <laughs> so easy but so difficult. but again it's the short arming it's like when you're not exactly. throwing it in the hole and again like i'm guilty of this too i practice just tons of slide shots you get in a position mm-hmm. you're like okay i'm used to the distance of a slide shot i need to just block behind and all of a sudden it's like it's like what do i do I, how do i throw yeah. it correctly how do i throw it yep. flat you know all yep. this kind of stuff so blocks we talked about that for a while but it's worth the practice do it's it just it's important worth it. yeah it's good and that leads into the next shot too which is push shots uh, cause blocks and pushes, obviously we talk about blocks and pushes as a play style. They go hand in hand in practice as well. Um, a lot of the time for push practice, I'll lay out a bag in front of the hole to start. Um, and I actually think a push shot with a single bag on the board, like no bumpers, no anything else around is a very difficult shot that I think it's people, hard. people think is very easy. Uh, it's be- hard. because when you're throwing a fast side into it, you kind of got to get enough of the bag dead on to push it straight without knocking to the side or knocking other directions. So especially I'll, if you're laying a V block. Oh, the V blocks brutal. Yeah. You can V block yourself pretty easily. Um, That's what I'm saying. But so I like laying a bag out in front of the hole and pushing it in. If I clear the bag out of the way, then I'll try to do that block practice and follow up with another push. Another thing at, with push practice that I'll try to practice is what we call a replacement bag, which I think yes. a replacement bag is also one of the best shots in Cornell uh, in ter- where like, you have a bag that's blocking the hole and you throw a bag that pushes that bag in, but your bag you just threw kind of sits in the exact same spot that blocker bag just was. Because now it's mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. You technically netted, made one in the hole, but now your opponent still has to deal with your blocker bag. You know, they don't have yeah, an they're still getting around you a bag. You didn't full clear out the hole. So uh-huh. again, everything, and we'll get into this more when we talk about strategy too. Every single thing in Cornell is about incremental advantages because a 12 to a 10 is the exact same amount of points as a five to a three. Right. I mean, yep. so it's OK if you gum up the board and you ha- like if you replace and they gum the whole board up with all four of their bags and you make the other three, you just netted two points. You have one in the hole and yep. three on the board. And that's just as good as having a slide in the whole fight. And I think um, people underestimate. They're like, oh, we all got it on the board, but none went in the hole. It's like, yeah, but if I have one in the hole, that's still two points. I mean, two points, There's is two, two points. points, you know, yeah. and. And a lot of the time I would find if you take people out of the slide fight, that's when you get your sixes, your fives, your sixes, your seven point rounds. When people are yeah. like, oh, I got to go through this block and then they miss off to the back to the left and then they get pushed away. And um, so push shots. And we were talking about this a little bit ago. I was talking about fast side. Um, getting used to throwing your fast side is really, really important. And I tell people this all the time. If you don't like the fast side material, like you don't like holding it, you need to find a different bag. Because yeah, you, absolutely. you need to have a bag that when you flip it over or use both sides, you're comfortable with both those materials. Because the perk of these two-sided bags is you have two completely different play styles in one bag. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> she goes, why am I looking at Eddie? I'm like, I don't know, why are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, 
But getting used to using that fast side and getting those push shots because the fast sides can do awesome things, they can, but they can be really punishing if you go too hard. Yeah. And just they being to that. the point that you have a two-sided bag. I know I hear people like, oh, when it gets humid, I just use the fast side of this bag all the time. I'm like, yeah, but then you're so one-dimensional. You have no other options. Like you, you need to have a bag that has you're two sides you can use. It. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's really important to have two sides you enjoy, which is why- That's why bags have two sides. Exactly. And we review so many bags, guys. Like wow. if you don't like a fast side material, there's another material at that same speed that it will suit you better. Like if you don't like the mm -hmm. game changer grittiness, throw the Pearl Sniper fast side, Viper fast side. It's smoother. If you don't like how thin that is, there's a couple new bags coming out with synthetic fast sides. The new uh, Lightning from Reynolds is a super soft yep. nine that I really that is really comfy to hold. There's tons of options. Find one that you like flipping around and using both sides of because those are huge. Absolutely. Um, the next shot you you alluded to this a little bit with the fast side, but um, yeah. a, a get around shot and a bully bag practice. Um, I think uh, the bully bag is obviously a lot easier than a get around shot um, because you're basically using a bumper. Uh, yes to an extent easier than a get be. around but i think it's still harder sure. um for all of you that don't know what a bully bag is bully bag is basically if they miss the bag next to the hole let's say i'm on the right side so they miss it left of the hole i throw my bag to hit into their bag to push it out of the way which then ricochets mine into the hole so not yep. only did i slide mine in but i made theirs unplayable like i made that ungettable yep right dead bag and mm -hmm. uh and and that's really important because we talk about advantages that's a two-point swing because they cannot collect that and yours is now in the hole um so bully bags really important how i practice that i lay a bag out blocking your opponent's side like on the side of your opponent and practice just hitting into that bag and bullying mm -hmm. it out of the way again the block shot the really cool part about block shot practice is it can go with all of these other practices in terms of if you successfully make a bully shot Try to throw a block in front of them again so you can bully off of that again, right? And get used to throwing these shots that aren't just sliding into the hole. Because at the end of the day, if you practice enough and you're good enough, you can slide it in the hole a good amount of times, right? Like everybody can figure out how to slide it in the hole. It's figuring out these things that are going to make you guys really, really good and and, yep. and make you better. But uh, you want to talk a little bit about that get around shot. You talked about it slightly. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually a really, really fun shot if you can get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. It's also incredibly difficult because it takes a lot of finesse. Sure. Uh, you know, you'll see a lot of people step out when they're doing it. And it's I do the same thing because it's typically a get around is you have the front of the hole pretty clogged. You don't really want to shoot an airmail for whatever reason. But you have a like if you stand on the left side of the board, you got that little, little left sliver of, yep. just in the back or along the side, you know, because the front's pretty clogged up, but you don't want to touch those bags at all. So typically the way I do it, you know, I flipped a fast side and it's just more of a lofted throw. And it's like you're saying fast side, you don't have to throw it harder. You know, you don't have to, I mean, with a push. You got the peanut I mean, tower. Yeah, whatever. I know, dude, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> dude, she's just stacking bags, yeah. whatever. Uh, but, you know, you're lofting it up and you want it to land soft, carry up, and it just wraps around the backside of the hole and falls in. You know, that's, you're getting around that block or you're, you're playing a really finesse shot. If you have touch and you can do that, that's actually like if my bag. opponent does that i'm like oh, well and you can like, kind of tap like i'd say the get around bully almost go hand in hand we're like in a get around kind you of. can kind of tap into the bag a little bit as you're sneaking around because that fast side usually doesn't grab too hard yeah it'll, so it'll kind of sneak a past bit. a little bit um mm -hmm. so that's kind of how i do my get arounds is i try to just kind of nick the back corner of the bag a little bit to kind of turn my bag the last little bit to catch the edge but yep. um yeah it's very much that's why when i talked about when you're practicing your slides, getting it where it stops next to the hole every time, getting used to that speed. Because if you're throwing a get around, you want it to slide up and stop right next to the hole just enough that it could start tumbling in, right? Just any, needs to fall in. Any too far, you're over the back. Any too short, you're not going to get that chance to start falling mm -hmm. in. So it definitely Absolutely. is a finesse shot. Um, and it, it takes a quicker bag. That's that's the unfortunate part. It has you know, to be that eight, nine. The six or seven speed isn't really going to do it. You know, it's unless the boards are playing just stupid fast that day. But, you know, that seven kind of tends to go and just sit mm -hmm. you know the eight or nines they're the ones that'll start to beads fall in and the yep. whole bag just wants to slide so it, it takes the faster bag which also takes more finesse because of that yep um next one obviously we've talked about this one a lot because we we're both getting into carpet a lot the flop roll yeah. shot uh my roll practice is pretty simple i just line up four bags in a line about four inches three inches in front of the hole 
And then mm-hmm. I just practice trying to roll over the top. Um, a lot of the time too, if you mess up a roll shot, you know, you're probably going to push the bags forward a little bit or something. Use that to your advantage. Like you're building a clog, try to roll over a longer area of bags, try rolling the other direction, try cutting around yep. the bags. You know, I mean, it's okay. The way I look at it is whether I need to do a push shot, a longer roll in that round, how can I make as many of my bags without making their bags? Cause they started mm-hmm. in front. Maybe it's, I roll now I'm behind them. Great. Now I can kind of push and finesse around. So I use that roll bag as almost like a real game practice of like, okay, I missed a roll. Roll is probably not the best here. How do I get the most out of this round without messing with their bags, whether it's cutting, Correct. rolling, doing that kind of stuff. Yep. And it, I think the cut roll and flop kind of all belong in the same category Yeah. because I mean, a roll and a flop, if you guys don't know the difference or roll, the bag is typically angled. Mm-hmm and it hits the board and it rolls end over end a flop you're doing a wheelie your nose up you know back loaded nose up whatever you want to call it when it hits the board and it hits the bag it flops over you know throws the beads forward so they are different shots they're utilized in a very similar fashion mm-hmm. but those two are very similar but when i throw my flop my flop roll hybrid that we both have right i actually do it sometimes when there's not a bag directly in front of the hole because it acts as a cut for me Sure. You're oh, saying yeah, minus, that you can minus get, too. Yeah. You get your nose down, you throw that hard cut. I just started know, and that today and I found that I right. was catching a little harder, but yeah. But but you get that big swing. You know, I don't have that ability with how I throw my bag. So if I throw a flop bag, it'll hit and it tends to go, it'll hit flat, it goes up onto its right side, and then when it gets near the hole, gravity brings it back down and it falls. So it becomes sure. a little bit of a cut shot. So it's super utility throw honestly it's i love it that's why i throw it so often uh but cut roll flop they're all just ridiculous and they're really demoralizing like we've said it's you do something like that you lay that perfect block another thing with cut shot practice too is like like let's say there's no bag or you happen to push a bag in the hole and you could practice a cut shot because of the way i throw my roll bag that it's very similar to the cut shot that you're basically practicing a roll bag again even though it's just cutting it's great so, I mean, like, mm-hmm. and, and we talk a lot, uh, and I have a video coming out on how to throw the roll bag. The, uh, one of the biggest parts of the roll bag is you have to land it two to three inches behind the bag that you're trying to flop over. So it has yes. time to get up on its edge and catch and roll over where like f- the practice, the main practice of your roll bag is going to be, you see the bag on the board. Can you mentally figure out how far I need to throw this to land at that point every single mm-hmm. time? Right. Because if you land too far, you're going to push the bag. If you land too short, you're not going to start rolling. So figuring out that distance control is going to be your biggest practice point with the roll bag. I know you've put, I've put at least 20 hours into roll bags already just to be able to finally do it decently yeah. consistently. I mean, I've been doing so them for, many hours. I want to say like three months now I've been practicing them and it's, I do it the same way you do. You know, mm-hmm. if I just want to practice them specifically, I put, I put two bags out front, sure. you know, because then a set does both sides, you know, two on one, two on the other. And my buddy and I, hey, you're innovating before hour. you didn't do the other side. Look at this guy. Hey boy, <laughs> I got it. Hey, you only lead a horse to water, right? Yeah. But it's, I do two on either side. And, you know, if you bump them, if you mess them up, whatever, just put them back, you know, throw down, mm-hmm. keep doing it. I mean, it's, it's practice, 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 practice. That's like every shot. I mean, slides are practices. It's just, it's a different style of practice, you know? And, and we're not, and I, I want to caveat this by saying, I'm not saying slide shot practice is a bad thing. I'm saying that it shouldn't be your only thing you do when you practice by yourself. Cause I feel like some Correct. people go outside the backyard and they're like, all right, four, I'm going to try to throw four bags. And I'm like, that's great. And it's great to practice slide shots. It's the most common shot you're going to use on a daily basis, Absolutely. but mm-hmm. you need to be able to practice all these other shots. So when you get in a scenario that you need this shot, it's not like, Oh man, that's like, how, what do I do? It's just like, Oh yeah, I see. Oh, no, it. I never do go. it. I'm going to mess it up. Yeah. yeah. Um, We'll talk about, I'm going to talk about the cut shot real quick too. So we talked a little bit about the cut shot. What the cut shot is, is you want the bag on tilt so that when it hits, it slaps and changes momentum directions to cut around a bag. So like if a bag is blocking directly in front of you, you could throw it in a way that it cuts around the back of the bag. And so then you don't have to go through this blocker bag. How I practice, I, I put a bag like in front of me and a block, maybe not a hundred percent blocking me, but slightly to the side to give sure. myself a little bit of room. Um, and the thing I've been trying to practice and granted guys, I don't even know how to do this that well yet is cutting left to right because cutting left to right is so hard to come off my hand to get it to go this angle. Like I, I haven't quite, I've gotten it a little bit, but I haven't quite figured out the right way to get it. So having both those shots is really important because it's easy to, for me to cut right to left, but cutting left to right is also a very important shot. If you're on the other side of the board, um, the cut shot opposite of you. 
Oh, I really? can go left or right. I can't go right to left. Well, you said because the wrist thing. I, I can't yeah, go left to like, right. It's the release. It's, yeah, from left to right. It's just that's my normal throw will kind of do that. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Mine does not. <laughs> but cut shots are equally as awesome to have. And you can cut any bag. I was the other night, the board oh, got can. sticky. I was throwing a seven speed and I was cutting around bags. And yeah. and I'll tell you what, it's it comes in handy, especially if you learn how to throw that flop, that cut shot, and you can break it out on a fast bag and be comfortable with it because those bags mm-hmm. are so hole friendly. It'll just kind of scoot around stuff. And it's almost like a pseudo get around bag. It's that's a great shot. Barely cutting um, that can really benefit, especially if there's some backboard back there. You just throw something that kind of loops around the side. Cut bags are awesome and something you really should They're have great in your bags. arsenal. Um, the last type of practice is uh, you probably the flashy shot if rolls aren't, but airmails so airmail practice in my opinion i shoot at least 30 to 40 in a row like 10 rounds because i need to get to the point and the biggest key with airmail practice in my opinion is get to the point that you can almost have an epiphany moment where it's like i feel how hard i'm throwing it or maybe it's for me it's i step a certain distance like my follow throughs a certain amount of power every time that it yep. it helps me get the same distance every time because you want to make it even if you're missing left or right that's fine it should be landing right where the hole is every time because if you can get that distance down then whatever it's a directional thing but Correct. but you want to be able to get to the point that it's like your throw is so consistent the way you're doing it that it goes the same distance every single time and i would mm-hmm. say after you throw 30 or 40 in a row con- and con- not just like chuck chuck, chuck like consciously you don't just focusing wing them. never just wing them yeah consciously focusing like all right i did this i noticed i did this it flew this far do it again and do that 30 40 times I promise you, like there was one day I did it and all of a sudden I'm going to events. I'm like, my airmail confidence is like through the roof. Like, I'm like, I'll just shoot them now. Cause I'm just like, I know, I know yep. how to do it. I know, I know how to throw it. Granted, I haven't practiced them in a while. So that confidence is completely gone, but I, <laughs> but I need to go have another session to get it back up again. But yeah, I, I typically practice my airmails at the end of every session, actually, oh, whether sure. I'm throwing for a video, whether I'm doing, you know, just messing around with flops and doing whatever, whenever I'm throwing my last 10 minutes or whatever it may be, you know, and I'll do eight bags each side or, um, yeah. you know, each walk back, I whatever. 30 today. <laughs> I want to do, oh, geez. I want to do four from one side, four from the other, you know, and I want to see, you know, is there a better side that I'm better airmailing from? Cause then if it's a game where I know I'm going to need it, I can tell my partner, Hey, I much prefer airmailing from the outside sure. or, you know, whatever it is. So I just, I think it's really important. I tell a lot of people that all the time, like, how do you practice your airmails? Like, and oh. every session, like you're saying, 30 or 40 of them, mm-hmm. just shoot them. Cause then you're going to start to figure it out at some point. You'll start to figure it out. You'll get it. And as gratifying as flops and rolls are an airmail drag to win the game. Oh, it's the best. It feels good. Dude, right? I, I, think, mean, I think actually my favorite shot that exists in Cornell is when you have like this much of the bag in the hole and you just like, uh-huh. and like grab it out of there. You see the bag lift a yeah, little bit and drop yeah. in. Uh-huh. Um, but, and, and you said this too, don't just wing them. Like no. practice throwing them in terms of like notice, like, oh, I went long. Why did I go long? You know, did I, th- yeah. did I feel like I threw it harder? Did I step harder? If, if you're stand still, did I use my legs or something? Like, what are you doing that's making it go longer? Cause you need to yeah, get exactly. some kind of physical cue that clicks that it's like, this is how far an airmail is. Like when I do yeah. this, it goes you need to figure out length. where it's at. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and that's key. It's always, always practice with purpose. Yeah. So um, hopefully you guys can use some of those tips. I think, I think if you can add those shots or at least become comfortable with those shots, the biggest thing with practicing is, you know, especially with the flop, you know, even I, like I'm starting to get the flop pretty good. Would I use it in the game yet? I'm not sure. You know, so you got to get to that mental breaking point that you're like, I'm totally fine breaking out a cut shot in a game, knowing that I'm not just going to wing it off the right side because I'm so used to throwing them. Um, so practicing and practicing with a purpose and practicing all these shots, uh, you will be amazed at how much uh, benefit it will have, uh, on your, on your game in general. And, uh, looks like Corbin got yanked away for another one, but, uh, <laughs> I'm here. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. But, well, I'm sorry, uh, I'm here. but yeah, so, uh, Vikings and, uh, pro advantages. The reason we kind of brought these up with the practice methods too, if you want to learn a cut or a roll, these are the bags, the Vikings, especially broken in Vikings are the easiest bag that I think I learn how to roll with. It's a controllable speed. It flops really, really well. And the pro advantage if you want to learn, if you get a broken in set of pro advantages for 40 bucks, you can easily learn how to roll uh, at a super cheap price and then determine if you like carpet and you want to invest in carpet because you can get them so cheap. So both great so options. Cheap. They've been around for a really long time. There's a reason they're still really good 
and there's a reason people still use them. So appreciate you guys stopping by for another episode. Uh, if you Absolutely. like these, please check out both of our channels. If you want to see reviews on these bags, uh, check out our channels as well. Uh, and um, we'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one, guys. Thanks, guys.